pain. You've had a lot of pain in your life. Pain seems like maybe it's one of your life lessons this time, one of them, pain. I look at pain as my friend. Pain is like somebody that's just gonna always be there. And you know, we learn from each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you found the good in it. Uh. My name is Dr. Siri Satnam Singh, and I'm a licensed therapist. This week, I'm sitting down with a rapper who has a blood disorder that has led to a lifetime of immense physical and mental pain. Today, he is trying to find meaning in his suffering. This is Prodigy of Mob Deep. I got you stuck off the realness. We be the infamous, you heard of us. Official Queensbridge murderers. The mob comes equipped for warfare. Beware of my crime family who got enough shots to share for all those who want to profile and pose. Rock you in your face, stab your brain with your nose bone. You all alone in these streets, cousin. Every man for himself in his land, we be gunning. And keep them shook crews running. Pain, you've had a lot of pain in your life? Um, I was diagnosed with sickle cell anemia, SS type. That's like the worst, the worst form. Um, when I was three months old. Sickle cell is for the people that don't know, you know, um, it's a hereditary blood disorder where my blood cells don't carry enough oxygen and when a blood cell doesn't carry enough oxygen, it change, my blood cells change shape into a, a sickle shape. That's where the name comes from. And then they interlock with each other. And then it just, it's like a domino effect. They all start interlocking and wherever that happens at, that's where the pain happens as excruciating pain. Like it's to the point where I can't even move. They have to pick me up or put me in a wheelchair and carry me to the hospital. Like, I can't move my body, I can't move my legs or anything, because the pain is just incredible. I couldn't do any strenuous exercise, couldn't do any contact sports. Um, you know, there's no cure for sickle cell. I don't know, I, I feel like it gave me a mental disorder a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It was really traumatic, just going through all that pain as a kid, and then next thing you know, a week later, I'm back to normal. It made me not believe in, like, God. I ain't believe in God. Just, you know, having conversations with God, begging God to make the pain go away, and then the pain wouldn't go away. So I'm like, who the hell am I talking to? I'm like, God is not responding, so I don't believe in that. You know what I mean? I'm just very uneasy right here. It's now really feeling what you're saying, and I think you're feeling what you're saying. All right. You know, here you are on Earth with this body. <sighs> that you sometimes have no power over. I was just really pissed and angry, so I was just doing a lot of negative things when I was a kid, you know, and like mm -hmm. guns and just drugs and... And then here you are all man and you couldn't play sports, so you had to tough it up and rough it and let them know who you were in another way. All right. You had to let them know you were, you were bad. Bad MF, you bad. Mm -hmm. Power. What does that word do to you? Power, the loss of power. The loss of power? Having the diagnosis of, that you have, that that's the loss of power that you said you, it made you really angry at one right. time. You don't, you don't like to be powerless. I never thought about that until you just said it. Like, that definitely triggers yeah. me as become self-destructive, like, yeah. you know what I mean? I just get angry and like... Oh, yeah. What's, what's, what's one episode that really triggered, you know, your destructive behavior <clears throat> when you had a loss of power? Any business deal, anything? Yeah, it was the main one. I was doing this business deal with somebody and uh, they actually took some of the footage, it was like we were shooting something. And I had spent a lot of money on this and they had like hijacked the footage and was demanding more money from me. I was 
piss. I threw the phone through the window and all that when I got off the phone to do it. And um, that night, when I laid down to go to sleep, um, you know, all the lights was off in my room, and I'm laying there, and I seen a black shadow walk across my room. <clears throat> and it looked like, the only thing I could describe what it looked like, like the black Spider-Man. Now you weren't on any drugs. Nah, nah. No. Nah, no, I just six wanna, years straight. I'm like, I just want to deepen you into super this healthy. is your life. Okay. Super healthy, clear minded. Okay. I'm doing positive things. Yes. Like I'm not. So I just laid there, and I put the sheet over my head, like like a little kid, and just like forced myself to go to sleep. And I woke up the next morning. The pain woke me up. I haven't been sick in six years, mm. and I was in so much pain I didn't even carry it to the hospital. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I knew what happened automatically. I already knew what it was. I already knew what that black shadow was. It's a story that's told about this black shadows that attach themselves to people here on the earth. And they feed off of negativity. They feed off of anger. I said, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. Like, that shit is real. And it showed itself to me. I was allowed to see it. You know what I mean? And and this was this was when I was about maybe 26. This happened, maybe 27. From that point until age 33, when I got locked up. You know what I mean? I've just been on like a downward spiral. From that point, you know what I mean? And that was, I was locked up for a reason because I wasn't living right. It had nothing to do with a crime. I had to do it, everything spiritual. That was like a slap from God, like, what are you doing? I'm just hearing all this, the incident that you talked about with your business deal activated emotional pain and mental pain that you could not overcome. You couldn't work your way through it. And then you got this physical pain. Right. What a, what a. Trying to make yourself sick. Mm. All right. <laughs> you know, quit making yourself sick. All right. Lift above it. So why did you go to prison? I went to prison because I got caught with an illegal firearm in my car. Um, it was an illegal search, too. I got stopped for a traffic stop, and they searched my car illegally. Um, the case would have got thrown out, but the detectives actually came to court during the trial and lied. Said when they walked up on the car, they saw the gun in my hand. Like, what person in their right mind would have a gun in their hand when police just pulled you over and they're walking up to your car? And they're about to ask you for your license and registration. I'm gonna sit there with a gun in my hand. And they didn't shoot you. That's very nice. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I shouldn't have had an illegal firearm in the car, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not trying to blame it on the police, but they lied. During my trial, we had gotten in contact with this guy who actually started the Hip Hop Task Force. The Hip Hop Task Force was like a myth. You know, it was a myth until my case. So the Hip Hop Task Force would? The Hip Hop Task Force was created to watch uh, Sean Puffy Combs, P. Diddy, to watch the artist that was connected with P. Diddy. And then it just grew. What they were doing was profiling black people that were making money in the music industry even if they wasn't committing any crimes. A lot of times people say, uh, you're a conspiracy theorist, you watch too many movies or something like that, you know? But a lot of, I, <clears throat> a lot of stuff I was learning was um, very real, you know? And, um, and we're supposed to be out here like, like, you know, everything is fine, life goes on, but, you know, that's, that's some shit that, that needs to stop. Yeah, uh, that was, when I first, when I first, realize what was happening, 
out here in this world and genocide, the genocide that they were putting on our people, like just speaking for our people right now, covertly, that made me cry. Be you know? free for a second and, and in an undaunted manner, just talk about something that you, that you really see and experience in this governmental system, in this world at large that uh, really causes you pain. I like what they're doing to the kids with the immunization shots. They have major programs, immunization programs, where they're poisoning us, you know? They, uh, they're infecting us with stuff on purpose, and it's called population control. They have these programs they do in Africa. They immunize the whole, the whole village. They'll give them shots, mm -hmm. and it's poison. They're killing them. They're giving them disease. They're filling them up with mercury. Okay. Immunizations. What else? There's a whole bunch of other, like, you know, freedom fighters and just people that's, you know, putting the truth out there to the world. And the FBI and the CIA have these covert operations where they stop them, they kill them, they assassinate them, or they assassinate their character, you know? I could see how it'd be very difficult for you to find the time and space and the people to really let yourself speak in an open manner with what you really feel and see and sense. Uh, not easy being you. Nah, definitely not. I've been, I've been, I've been given um, guidance. You know what I mean supernatural guidance that people wouldn't even understand if I tried to talk to them about it, you know what I mean? So, uh, I'm, and just being at one with what you're saying, you're talking about otherworldly experiences mm -hmm. and... Supernatural experiences. Yes. <laughs> I've had messages in time where things happen, and I didn't get it until years later. And it was put there as a message in time so I could connect the dot later. How did it come to you? Um, just like weird stories, man. Like, um, uh, you know, They won't be weird to me. People would come looking for me, you know, walk around the projects. I need to find Prodigy, I need to talk to Prodigy. I got a message for him. And at the time, I was like, what? And my friends would tell me, yeah, somebody was walking around the whole hood looking for you. White dude looked like Jesus Christ. I'm like, what the is y'all talking about? And uh, he had knocked on Havoc's door. My partner, Havoc, Havoc's brother was there. Opened the door for him, pulled a gun out on him. Like, what you looking for P for? What's up? He's like, oh, no, I have a message for him. I have a message for him. Could and, you share uh, that message in terms of did you get your purpose? Just, it was just, you know, to let me know that what I'm doing is right with the music and who I am, you know what I mean? And I've been here before. This ain't my first time living on this planet. They've said I've been here for many thousands of years, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're going to heal me, mm -hmm. and, and I was healed, you know what I mean? But it wasn't nobody healing me. They just give me the tools to be healed and let me know you're doing the right thing. And if you keep doing that, you're not going to get sick anymore, and you're going to be able to do your job with your purpose here on this earth, you know what I mean? It's just stuff like that. That kind of trips me out because I'm not even that type of person to believe in stuff like that. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, what the f is you talking about? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what I'm sensing and experiencing is that, you know, throughout life with all of this consciousness you have, you have to defend against what you know, what you see, what you hear. What does it feel, feel like that. to hear that? What does that do to you? To I feel that that's true. Yeah. I've, I started asking God, you know, once I started coming to the realization that there is a God, 
-hmm. Like, am I supposed to believe this? I'm supposed to believe this? What I'm learning and what, what I'm being told, if I'm supposed to believe this, man, show me something. Give me a sign, show me something. And I was, I was shown many things. I'm sure. Give me a witness now. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to have a witness. You know what I'm saying? Which was the mother of my kids. She witnessed some, something incredible with me. You know what I mean? That happened. And uh, what, what we saw scared the shit out of us. I was asking to see uh, a UFO, basically. Mm -hmm. And it came over my house. It just started shining lights in our bedroom. You know what I mean? The whole neighborhood blacked out at first. And uh, I looked out the window, looked down the block, and I seen all the power was out. First it was a white light. And I thought it was a police helicopter looking for somebody outside. And then all these colored lights just started coming in the room. It was dead quiet. Mm -hmm. And the lights was changing like many colors. Like, mm -hmm. And um, it was pretty um, significant, man. It was like undeniable. And it became because I was asking for it to come. So you're on another wavelength. Wow. <sighs> it's, so you have had this physical pain, emotional pain. You discussed earlier your mental pain. And so maybe you were given this life at birth of pain so that you could feel the pain and work through it and elevate others. All right. It's almost like that whole quip of healer, heal thyself. Mm. And then you have the message to give. All right. talked about something you, you and your wife experienced there. You talked about this spirit walking across the door. You talked about this figure coming to your, to where, you, you know, Havoc was living. So you're having a very supernatural life experience, but not deepening into it that which is super normal, you're trying to rationalize and make it normal. Right, it's uh, not normal. It's not normal. I don't think you're normal. And here you are feeling weird, different, <laughs> disjointed, right. conflicted, because you're trying to be normal. You're not normal, and that's okay. Right. It's really okay. We love you for being that we, we honor you for being that but you have to honor you and love you for being that yeah I mean I'm def I definitely struggle with like you know just uh just accepting it is what it is like you know it is what it is what do you think would help you accept that still instead of going oh why me Man. I'm going, wow, I'm honoring your life experience. But the work is for you to really own wholeheartedly your world from here. This will get you in trouble. You're trying to figure it out. Mm. <laughs> this could be your greatest problem. You know, people are coming to you if you own it in terms of, I had a vision, I had an experience, let right. me share. I had some knowledge, I have some education, let me share. Through my music, through my creativity, through my depth. What are you feeling now? Mm, a little inspired, <laughs> inspired to do what I need to be doing. Mm. I just need to own who I am and stop trying to fight it. Yeah, yeah. So I always end my sessions and I always ask, you know, 
what happened here today for you? Not what should have happened, not what you uh, thought was going to happen, but just to sit into your experience and really what happened here today. Um, I mean, it was definitely the first time where, I, you know, I've shared, you know, that, that experience, those experiences I've had, you know, with, um, on this type of platform, you know, um, and I've definitely, um, definitely made me just think more about, you know, accepting what it is, you know, and just accepting like who I am and what it is and do what I gotta do, you know what I mean? Who are you? I'm somebody that's very blessed, man, you know, and I wanna share the blessings with others. You obviously are a very strong individual, powerful to sustain this sickle cell. That does kill people? Okay. You're not supposed to live past 40. Okay, and That's you're how old? 42. What about for the rest of your life? What about overcoming the, their statistic? You're supposed to be dead at 40. You already overcome that. You already overcome that. Pain seems like maybe it's one of your life lessons this time. One of them, pain. I look at pain as my friend. Pain is like somebody that's just going to always be there. And, you know, we learn from each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you found the good in it. Yeah. Uh, 